Hello, everyone. It's Sunday. It's 2 p.m. Welcome to episode four of Ask the Drummer. And this week's guest is actually really special. He's really special to me. And I really love this man, legend. So I'm not going to keep him waiting um, longer. So I'm going to bring him in now. Um, my dear friends, let's please welcome the one and only Simon Waltonscroft, Wal Walstoncroft. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I can't even pronounce his name. Um, Simon Walstoncroft, Funky Sai. Hello, Anna. Hello, hello Funky Sai. Good afternoon. It's just, uh, it's a bit of a you? long surname. Am I know nice surname? Just call me Funky Sai. Just Funky Sai. I was so sorry. Yeah. Because. <laughs> Walston Croft. <laughs> that's, like, that's a bit of a mouthful now. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah, it's good. That, I know. Yeah, we'll just call you not to worry. Side. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's not a great start, isn't it? It's so, all like pronouncing the guest's name wrong. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, right. So, do you want to just say hello to our friends first, to watching us and joining us? Um, yeah. Hello, everybody. Say, uh, thanks for um, having me on, Anna, today. I've uh, oh, been looking forward to doing this. We've known each other a while, haven't we? Through the live yeah, scene of Manchester and beyond. Yeah, right. oh, I no, uh, you, really I've never seen... Well, you go to so many uh, gigs. It's great music, <laughs> isn't it? You know, it's the, uh, <laughs> the best It's the best drug of all music is. That's Oh, my God, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Spiritually that's and everything. Fantastic. Do, yeah. do you know, I get so nervous because I was practicing this that when I bring you on the show, I was going to go like this. Oh. <laughs> so, do you know, because I'm really not worthy. I mean, this is like, oh. you're a legend. You're, no, well, not, but, just legend. <laughs> not just legend. Not just legend, but... Yeah, I was playing last night. Man uh, legend. Yeah. Yep. I, I went to a festival. I played with um, my band at the moment, San Pedro Collective. At the Moving yeah. Festival, yeah. which is out in Pastotport in the hills there. It's, it's a great yeah. festival, great music. Um, we did a show in, in the big barn stage there. Really good. It's just so nice for people to come up. But I do have yeah. difficulty remembering who all these people are and what they're called. <laughs> it gets a bit embarrassing. But, <laughs> but they're all lovely and uh, it's so nice to be out walking around saying hello yeah. and chatting to everybody so it was a great oh. day yeah 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 i just wish you know I, i've told you before i wish i could split myself into two because i would have wanted to be there as well but i was i was yeah. looking yesterday as well, so. you have to go next year put it oh, in your yeah, diary yeah. for next year yeah yeah it's a, it's a great it's festival not, it's yeah, not it's just not the right far. time yeah. you can walk around it in a, uh, you know half an hour it's not yeah. too big. So I'd recommend it to anybody to go and see the Moving Festival. Moving Festival. Yeah, 2022. Yeah. yeah. 2022. Yeah, I'd definitely yeah. So like to try that one. Um, before anything else, let me just sort of like say, you know, um, I'm really grateful to you. I'll always be grateful to you, Funky Side, because I don't know if wow. you remember it, but March 2017, um, Andy Rourke was here. Um, he was in town, and I remember oh. sort of like saying, "Oh my God, I would love to meet him." And do you know what? It was sort of like when you messaged me to say that he's flying back to New York the following day oh, okay. to go to sail and meet you there, and so I can meet. Yeah. You. I was like, I just dropped everything, and then what? had a shower, <laughs> took you know, took the tram to sail, and I was like. Oh my god, this is really happening. <laughs> Cuz I just thought how many legends would actually do that for a fan. Oh, no, so, Andy's um, cool, you know. Uh, Andy's know, really nice. Um he's one of my yeah. oldest friends and uh what a bass player. Uh, yeah. he's in America now, uh, in Brooklyn. Yeah. And I, I can't yeah. wait to go and see him again, you know. Uh, when it gets a well, hopefully this year, the end of this year, hopefully, gone over to see him. Are, are we okay to travel? 
are we okay to travel to America now, or are they? I don't know really, but I think them? it might be all right by then, don't you? Let's hope yeah, so. Hopefully. Keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, really, thank you so much for doing that. You know. Oh, don't like, worry. Oh uh, <laughs> you deserve <laughs> that. You know. Your last oh, thank, you. thank you. Um, well, this week we've had um, an extremely sad news, not just in the drumming world, but in the music world in general. You know, um, when we've heard that um, Charlie Watts sort of like left this planet. And yeah, was he God rest his soul. Yeah, yeah it's, he, it's, uh, that was really sad. Was he a big influence? on you uh yes i think he was subconsciously or not i'm not sure but my mom Pat, um she loves the rolling stones she, she likes a lot of other things motown um yeah. you know yeah. 70s disco but uh i must have picked it up when i heard you know playing you know stuff off aftermath the album yeah. um stuff like that she had that one she might have had a greatest hits, Rolling Stones, with a uh, oh, gold right, yeah. picture of the band yeah. on the front. Um, black, it was. Yeah, um, he kept it it's simple. Not... Yeah. For the Stones, that is. It worked for them. Um, that's the thing with drummers, you know. The Stone Roses wouldn't have been as good as they were um, without Rennie, as far as, yeah, you know, yeah. my opinion. First oh, time ever scoring, <laughs> uh, rehearsing, you know, in the late 80s in Chorlton, it was down the road where I live. Right. <laughs> uh, it was amazing. I couldn't take my eyes off him. Oh, and, right. you know. So, were and, you, were you, um, the Stones? It's like, the, are you the Beatles or the Stones? So, you're more the Stones. I'm more the, the, I'm more the Stones just because yeah. my mum played the Stones. Yeah. And, you know, I, I like that bit of, you know, they're a bit more dangerous, weren't they? That, yeah. more of a swagger <laughs> than yeah, the Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles are great, of course, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Stones guy type of guy. Yeah, well, that's sad. So R.I.P. Rest in peace, yeah. Charlie Watts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. That, I just want to say, funky side, that my King Bee colleague Neil Barker, he's joined us. So hello, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Neil. So you just hi, said, Neil. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Anna. Hi, Sai. So. Yeah, but he's he's <laughs> he's great because um, I work with him at King Bee Records, and I don't know you you know King Bee Records, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Neil Neil is like uh, he's my colleague there. So oh, anyway, right, absolutely. You know. Yeah, yeah. You work there, then, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you? I didn't I, know that. I'll come in and see you. Yeah, come on the Saturday because that's I work on the. Is that Saturday. when you work? Right. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Oh. I might, I might buy a record. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, episode four of, of Ask the Drummer. It's all about it's all about you, Funky Sai. So um, we'll <laughs> so we'll um, start from the very beginning. Okay. Um, right. The year you were born. Now, I've been practicing this for the past couple of days. So the year you were born, or the day you were born. Right, here it goes. It was January 1963. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that bit in your book. It actually caught my eyes where you said, God, January 63. Yeah. That's a, a new order lyric as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not, a no, new 1963. 1963. Got a song called, it's a great yeah. song, that's right. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's like New Order. It's like, how mad can one person get? I mean, it's like born. It was January. <laughs> was it deliberate, though, in your book? Was, or not really? What What was deliberate? <laughs> the, that, that line where it says it was January 1963. Was that deliberate in your book? Um, In relation to the New Order track? New, yeah, yeah. No, that's not about me, the song. <laughs> <laughs> Which well, is the same, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no, I just, I just thought I'd start, start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah start at the beginning. 
but yeah. it's good to actually it's a, it's good to actually put it in there because it really you know it catches uh someone's eye like if like someone like me who loves manchester so much and with that there in the beginning yeah immediately you think of the new order song did you, you know right yeah yeah right okay <laughs> Well, it, um, it, was very, it was the coldest winter of the century, 1963. The snow was, you know, 12 foot high in some places. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what was going to say then? Go on, ask me another <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, you were born in, I was reading in your book, it's like Ringway, Ringway Parish? Is that yeah, Ringway? Parish Ringway. Um, Altrincham, which is south west Manchester, it's about seven yeah, or eight yeah. miles southwest. Uh, I live there, mum and dad yeah. went abroad one day on holiday to uh, Portugal and saw the cabaret drummer playing. Loved it so much that that's you know, I thought I want to be a drummer. That was probably when I was about age 10. And, right, yeah, um, yeah. And then I was listening to Sweet, the ba band, who I absolutely yeah. love. Hellraiser, Ballroom Blitz. Um, what a great band they were, you know, really exciting. A lot of yeah. people I meet nowadays, they also appreciate, I didn't realise how many people appreciated Sweet, the band. I mean, yeah. it was all, you know, very theatrical they were, weren't they? Yeah. They did yeah, yeah. they their number one on top of the pops. And I was, yeah. you know, watching the drummer, that's how I started uh, learning the drums. I, did, I never had a lesson. I'd, I've just done it by ear. And uh, I've been lucky, really, getting the gigs that I've got along the way, really. But yeah. that's where it all started, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so, it wasn't, so it was the drummer from Sweet? Do you Nick have to Tucker. know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, was it on... Um, was it because you know, like, um, kids in the UK, um, in those days, they loved Top of the Pops, didn't they? I mean, Top of the Pops, the is like we were on it every week, they had yeah, so many yeah. hits, just one after the other, after the other. And yeah, you know, when they yeah. came on the radio, it was just I loved them, you know, the sound, it was really exciting. And yeah. uh, so it's a big influence on me, they were, as well as the Rolling Stones. And the, yeah. and the mode down, my mum was playing. And so I picked up bits of drumming, you know, off these different things. Yeah. And, uh, well, I started my first band when I, when I went to Altering Grammar School uh, in 1974, oh, yeah. aged 11. Yeah. And I'm sat with Ian Brown and John Squire in my class. So oh my um, yeah. <laughs> I got instantly I attracted to Ian. He had a look yeah. about him. He was a big Bruce Lee fan, and um, he did studied karate um, at the club in the, down the road from Alter. I think he got to black, black Belt as well eventually. But uh, I like the look of him, and we made a, a friendship straight away, me and Ian, a born yeah, yeah. entertainer who would get up in front of the class and have the class in roaring with laughter, you know, mimicking teachers. He's very good mimic, Ian. <laughs> uh, John the Quiet for one. Um, yeah, yeah. It was when punk rock started, um, you know, well, set 1977, really. When the Clash album, the first one, came out, John Squire yeah. and I were massive uh, fans of this. We went to see the Clash at the Apollo, and yeah, um, yeah. it was just a, a life changing moment for me. Probably John as yeah, well, you know, yeah. seeing. <laughs> A proper band going at it, you know, with a big crowd yeah. there, and, um, really exciting. So that's when we started our uh, punk band, The Patrol. That would have been 1978 by now. But, but you um, started, sorry, sorry, but you started with Red Alert. Well, that was the name we had when we had um, Ian decided to call it that briefly. Yeah, we were yeah. just rehearsing in my mum and dad's bedroom in Altingham. Yeah, yeah. My dad, my mum was a night nurse and, and it was a Thursday night. My dad used to go out and play snooker, so then we go, we all go home uh, to my house in the top bedroom. 
and set up and play. Yeah. And that, that's when we were red alert. And then when we started doing gigs around Sale yeah, Youth yeah. Club, Sale Annex, Dunham Massey Village Hall. We played in town um, under the Piccadilly Hotel that was, I forgot the name yeah. of the bar now, with the guy from um, The Alarm. Um, who had, Mike was in, Peters? Was it Mike Peters, the singer? Or? Yeah, he was in a band called 17 before he made it big oh. with The Alarm. And we supported oh him. Yeah. Uh, it's me, John Square. <laughs> uh, uh, Andy Cousins was at the vocalist who we'd yeah, picked yeah. up when we all went to South Trafford College in Simply. We were looking for a oh singer. My God. We had a car, yeah. you know, as well, and he looked all right. So Ian asked him, you know, to join the band, and he did. Yeah, I was so like thinking you, Ian Brown, John Squire, and Andy Cousins. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, and those, I wish in those days you already had mobile phones and people videoing because. Tell me about it, like, yeah. It, it would have been great to have sort of like clips of the four of you there, so sort of like on stage, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> I have got some um, in a secret locked away drawer. <laughs> some recordings, yeah. You know, tape yeah. recording of some of the gigs. I'm going to yeah, go through yeah. it one day and find out, you know, get a, see if we can get a nice little bit. Because oh, we were learning speak. to play. Not, yeah, none of us had lessons. Uh, John oh. Squire was practicing in his, ba you know, bedroom. Yeah, the tiny yeah. little amplifier his dad made for him. And uh, it was a great time, really good. I mean, oh, John and I, would, John and I would go and follow the clash round. Yeah, that's what yeah. we wanted to do. We wanted to be in a band. So that's you know, what I um, started. Yeah, reading your book, it really made me want, wish that I was already here at the time. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it, was just, it must have been amazing, you know, with like all these names. But anyways, um, Funky Sai, I just want to say hello to um, um, our friends who joined us. And today is um, hello, yeah. Malou. Malou is my um, classmate in high school. Oh, hi, um, Malou. Yeah, they're all in the Philippines. Monty Mendigoria, he's got a show um, as well. This is actually where uh, I got the, you know, the idea from because he's got oh. a show called all about New Wave, uh, talking about all our New Wave heroes and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, hello, Monty, and also Gilbert. Yeah, Gilbert Chan. Um, he's my wow. best friend in the Philippines as well. So they're all, all, all of them are in the Philippines and they're watching you. So oh. nice to see you. <laughs> Yeah. So, anyways, you're going back to um, Red Alert. Um, you didn't have any. You didn't do any recording or anything. There was no um, um, with well, Red Alert. By the, we, we weren't Red Alert for very long. Probably about right. two or three months. Then we were the Patrol, and then we oh, all yeah. we all went to this little studio uh, in Russia on the Moss Side, called oh, I forgot what it's called now. Little um eight track recording studio it's not there anymore yeah. i went to go and have a look because i like to do my uh, little podcast on my camera at places that i've drummed in i you know over the years yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's a car park or another block of flats oh, but, um, right. I, I, I can't remember the name of it but we all chipped in and we, and we, and we did three yeah. tracks one jail of the assassins uh and too many tons yeah and, and yeah. another one i think but uh, don't they sound like Clash titles then? You know, <laughs> Jail of the Assassin. Could be a Clash song, couldn't it? Yeah, I posted um, the video of that on my wall just now, well, you know, before we came on. And a video? So brilliant. It, it was in the no, video. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really a video, but it's a YouTube clip of it. So <laughs> oh, right, it's, okay. it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite naive, you know. But yeah. that's what that's how we started off. They're the three of us. Yeah. Um, but we did, you know, you not, we did that. Well, are you we, not we, thinking we, of releasing it as sort of like um, similar to the Waterfront, like a record store day exclusive release? You know. Um, what would it have to be in vinyl? With the patrol, yeah, yeah. So sort of like, yeah, no vinyl patrol. 
How much is it? How much is how much does it a vinyl record? <laughs> you know. Well, the waterfront when it was uh, released, I think it was like twelve or fifteen pounds. But oh, it's a record cool. store. Yeah, yeah, it's a record store day special. Right. I was thinking, you know, if you could get the patrols recording on vinyl and well, there might be something out, better. Like, there might yeah, be something like, better on the secret tape. I've got the Portland oh Bar. <laughs> That's what it's called, the bar where we played, supporting the 17. Yeah. The, uh, the Portland bars on New York Street in Manchester. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's where it was. Right. Well, I also want to say, um, we've just joined this Guy Keegan of the Railway Children. You know the Railway Children? I can't believe Guy Keegan is watching us. It's like he said, um, you know, say hello to us as well. <laughs> wow. So, I, you know, I you know know. Yeah, I do. You know the I, yeah. Well, I think we used to rehearse when I was um, in a band. It might have been when I was in the fall at the boardwalk. Yeah. Uh, there was a rehearsal complex downstairs from the theatre. Great little place that was. Such a shame, you know, that's not there anymore. But uh, yeah, yeah, Oasis yeah. were in there. Swing Out Sister were in there. The Fall were in there. <laughs> you know, oh. uh, quite a mixture of people. But yeah, that's where yeah. I might have met them, the railway children, that is. And oh, I think I knew was their manager called Colin. Do you oh, know that? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, Maybe. I think he, might have, he might have been the manager. Right. With the oh. as well. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's great to know that. I mean, like, you know, all these bands that we love, we all seem to be so, like, connected. Is. <laughs> yeah, well. Right, so after them. After the patrol, um, that's when. So you you met Johnny Ma, or are you already yeah. friends with? Yeah, uh... it's, it's before they became the Stone Roses. Before Rennie joined the band, I'd yeah. gone back with them a couple of times just rehearsing, but they weren't called the Stone Roses, as I say in the book. But you know, when I was with them that last time, that was yeah. about nineteen eight, uh, eighty, eighty one. I'd met Johnny in nineteen eighty one. Um, right. in, the, in a pub in Sale, near where well, we used to go drinking there, called the Vine, and uh, Andy Rock had come, and Johnny, and Johnny was looking for a drummer for his new band, and uh, I said, "Oh, bring him in. I'll have a look at him." And he swaggered <laughs> in, Johnny. He looked great. You know? <laughs> Dead cool. <laughs> uh, he's a funny oh, guy. I love him, Johnny. Anyway, yeah. uh, it's. We did, we're doing stuff like, um, I call it industrial funk. It's a bit like a certain ratio. This is 1981. Um, right, we go yeah. to Bethlehem yeah. Studios in Ancoats to rehearse. Mm -hmm. And we did this for about, probably about a year, uh, as a freak party, we were called. Andy Rock right, on yeah, bass, yeah, yeah. me yeah. on drums, Johnny on electric. He was really good, Johnny. First time I went to his house, he played... Um, Oh, uh, this Australian guy did a thing, classical, classical, or oh, jazz, no. He used to be on a TV oh. theme. Oh, I wish okay. I could remember what it is. It'll come back to me. <laughs> but he played it straight off, and, and I was so impressed while he was turning yeah. the enemy at the same time. This, you know, dead complicated guitar, you know, an acoustic round at his mum and dad's yeah. there. So I was, wow. <clears throat> I was very lucky to be be with them. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we were looking for a singer all the time. And uh, eventually, um, Johnny kind of went his yeah. own way briefly, for whatever uh, yeah. reason. And yeah. uh, he, he got in touch with me and, and said, Si, Si, will you be, I want you to be my drummer. I found this guy for my new band. And I thought, your new band? <laughs> 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 but um, wasn't it, it, wasn't it, wasn't it, um, you know, it was yeah, it was Morrissey, it was Morrissey. Yeah. Right before, um, wasn't so, it, wasn't it, oh sorry, sorry. Um, wasn't it? It, it was uh, on last night, Morrissey. Um, yeah. At the Vegas Caesar's Palace. Yeah, Vegas, yeah, that's right. Last night. Um, <laughs> well, before, I, did, I did see yeah. him last year, Morrissey. It also yeah. was buying some stamps. Saw him through the plate glass door. I was going out, 
thought it can't yeah. be him, can't be him. It was him. And um, we had a chat for about 20 minutes. He was a bit freaked out at first. Cause I've not <laughs> seen him since 86. But uh, going back to 1981 in Ancoats, when he walked through the door, Morrissey, this new singer, Johnny had found, I just, I don't know, he didn't look at me in the eye, Anna, and I thought, oh, you know, that's a bit odd. But uh, <laughs> basically, the, the song with the, we did two songs at the first recording, Suffer Little yeah. Children, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and another one, but The Moors Murders, it just wasn't me. Um, I've been through Sweet and Punk and Two Tone, yeah. And then British jazz funk uh, in the early 80s, by that time, that, that's what I was yeah. getting off on. It just wasn't for me. Yeah, you didn't want this depressing soul. <laughs> like, no, and it know, wasn't funky. <laughs> yeah. if, Andy oh. Rock, if Andy Rock yeah. had been there that day, it might have all been different. Because yeah. it wasn't Andy on bass. It was me, it Johnny was... and Morrissey. And that Dale Hibbert was there. Wasn't the studio boss, Philippe, he was French, yeah. he was in Paris on business. And the bass player, who was also the engineer at the studio, yeah. had the key. Yeah. And he let us yeah. in, snuck us in at night, and we did it. And he, anyway, they tried to persuade me, the pair of them, but I just yeah. didn't fancy it. I didn't. Um, did I regret it? Well, no, no, not really. Maybe at the time, yeah. you know. But I've, I, I managed to go around the world with a fall several times, so all that experience, I, I got that in the end. Oh, what's happened? There you go, we're live. Oh my God, oh, <laughs> we're back. We'll back. <laughs> Very stressful. Thanks, oh, thanks yeah. to Lulu for helping me out. You know, oh, to get thanks, it going Lou. again. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't have, I didn't know what's happening either. No, so I've got eight. Not to worry. Help me today. Well, well, well. <laughs> we were nineteen eighty one uh, with free party. Uh, John, Johnny had uh, begged me to join us. Um, I just didn't. Think. So uh, off I went and did my thing. A bit of work with um, Terry Hall from the specials yeah. in yeah, a band called yeah. The Colourfield. The Colourfield, yeah. In 1984, yes. and he hired me to go a, a, well, a live performance on TV on a, on a show called yeah. The Tube, which was done up in Newcastle. Um, it was really exciting. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, well... I was lucky enough to work with Neville Staple as well later, from also from the specials. Right, yeah. In, yeah. In different uh, situations. I was really into two to own. Exciting, you know. When we saw the specials, John and I, Squire, and uh, the Apollo again. The Apollo's the best venue for me, you know, pretty oh, much yeah. anywhere, yeah. certainly in Manchester. Yeah. I love it. As a as a, yeah, an it, audience yeah. member, or as a drummer, you know it's great acoustics, very high building, and yeah. uh, I've, I've had some adventures in that place. I've got to say, yeah, we've got so, uh, that, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, it was Johnny Ma who nicknamed you Funky Sai, right? Yeah, it was. I, I was yeah. really into um, the theme music of Star Skin Hutch, the TV show. Stuff like right. that, Shaft, John Shaft, yeah, yeah. the Isley Brothers, all that kind of stuff, that American stuff. I loved it, and yeah. uh, that's what I like to play. Well, it's got to be funky, you know, when I'm uh, for me to be really interested in playing in the band. Yeah, yeah. You so, know, um, uh, I, I don't want to be in a out band. It's got to have some funk in it. Yeah, yeah. See what Hello? Hello? You've got to give it space and they'll not to play. <laughs> um, you know, like James Brown or it's it's kind of it is sex really to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like it was for her. You know, the fun. That's what it means. Yeah. 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 So, so, right, so um, going, I don't, yeah. forgot where I was. <laughs> no, um, where was so, I? Well, let's go back to that moment when you met Morrissey. What, last year? Yeah. Um, right. So um, he, you said that he didn't even look you in the eye. So not in nineteen eighty one, he didn't. No, yeah. but he was pleased to see me this time. Um, right. And he was asking him all about, um, you know, Marky e. Smith because Marky e. Smith and the Fall had given the Smiths uh, one of their early support gigs in London. Right. I'm not sure if it was the. Um, the, the mean machine or the fiddler, I'm not sure. Somewhere in London, the Smith yeah. support is a fall. <laughs> oh, so we, kind of a, we got a kind of bit of respect for each other, Mark and him. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was great when I saw him last year. And I thought, shall I go up? Because he didn't look very happy, to be honest. Um, oh, but, uh, what? Yeah. No, he didn't. Well, his his, his mother was poorly and uh, she oh, sadly yeah. passed away. Yeah. But um, yeah. I had to go and talk to him for, because for better or for worse, he changed the course of my drumming um, journey, if you like. You know, yeah. Yeah. going with him, I went with someone else, which led to something yeah. else. You know, well, that's how it worked. Yeah. Um, this album by the Smiths, it's The Queen is Dead, the most oh, yeah. famous um, photo of them outside Salford Lads Club. Oh, yeah. We've been there, um, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, Andy Rook's um, jacket. Wasn't he wearing your mom's jacket? Yeah. Um, in that picture, that suede coat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Peepskin coat. Yeah, my mum yeah. bought that in 1963. Going back there again when I was born, I told you it was yeah. cold, and she bought that sheepskin jacket, which I ended up giving to Andy. And then I That's think he just... passed it on. He passed it on to Johnny after that briefly. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know what happened after that. I wonder where it is. So you didn't get it back. You, you didn't get it back. No, and I, I never got it back. No. Uh, it was a good, good quality. It was. It was really thick. You know, yeah. and uh, yeah, it kept us all warm anyway. <laughs> wonder where it's gone. Wonder who's got it. <laughs> have you have you asked Johnny Ma if he's still got it? No, he won't have it. I don't think he, he wears animal uh, skins, does he? Stuff like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. It's vegetarian oh. <laughs> anyway. Um, right, I've got a question from someone called um, Andrew Berry. I don't know if he's oh. watching. Yeah, but he said, yeah, he he said if you could have played in a band at any other time and any other era, which yeah. one would it be? Um, which era? It wouldn't be now, it'd be before I started doing it. Yeah. Uh, but which band? Which band would I which like band? to have been in? Yeah, yeah. Oh god, the Isley brothers. Something oh. like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's or, great. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Or later on, um, Pharrell Williams's band, uh, Neptune's, are they called? Oh yeah. Something yeah. like that. I would have loved to have played on that stuff. You know, he's oh. very good. Then uh, Pharrell oh, yeah. Williams. Yeah. yeah have love you met him? Never okay. know. I'd love to. I'd love to go and watch his band. You know, whatever project yeah. he's doing. Uh, maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> did you did, did you did you like the one with Robin Thick? That yeah, I like song. all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, all this stuff. It was project <laughs> Neptunes, wasn't it? Yeah. Is that what yeah, you were called, Emma? Neptunes, yeah, yeah. Is like Yeah, then. Is it nerd? Is it nerd? Like yes, NERD, 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 yeah. NERD. It was NERD. Yeah. yeah. I, I had one of their albums anyway, a CD. But I yeah. wore it out, you know, on the tape player. <laughs> and they said they were indestructible, didn't they, CDs, when they first came out? And, yeah. And the, that is a fact, so it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, the first time I saw you, Funky Sai, you're with the G.O.D. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drafters yeah. of Denton. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love the geo. Do you and Chris? Yeah. Bridget? Well, they were very. Um, a lot of people asked me. You know, oh, I love them. What? 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 Why? Why didn't you do it anymore? Yeah. They just. Um, it was. It wasn't funky enough for me, and um, I, that's why. I mean, it was great. You know, we did. Uh, I've known Chris Bridget for years. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, we've kept in touch and he asked me to if I drum for his band, I said yes. We did a few gigs, we did some great recordings, and we ended up supporting the Stone Roses at Wembley Stadium. That's right. I was I went to London to see you. Oh. The, day, well, the night the before Stone you Roses. supported yeah, the night before you supported the Stone Roses. Yeah. But I didn't I didn't get <laughs> I didn't get a ticket to see the Stone Roses in London. But that, oh, oh, the um, night before. Yeah, the night yeah. before you were at um, Dublin. And I forgot Castle. about that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it, was, yeah it, was great, it was a great adventure that we yeah. did there. It was only by luck that I saw Ian Brown driving down the motorway one day, um, <laughs> somewhere near Warwickshire, and his silver Lexus. <laughs> and I said, "Is that you?" He says, "Yeah. How do you fancy it's your birthday? It was my birthday." We said, oh, yeah. um, how would you like to support us at the Wembley, you know, and whenever it was? It's about five years ago now. So yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, you're right. So uh, it was great, and we did that, and it was always an ambition um, of mine, you know, to play when I was a kid, and yeah. it was playing with biscuit tins and knitting needles off my mum to play Wembley Stadium, you know. <laughs> uh, that was so a dream come true, not just for me, but for Ian as well. Yeah. And they said, we did it, Si, we did it. We, we played Wembley. I <laughs> oh, we're good. Seeing it. But um, that day, after London, I actually went to Glasgow the following day oh, to see you? the Railway Children. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I had a ticket to see the Railway Children. So Should have come with me, no? That was, yeah, they're very good. <laughs> well, no. um, yeah. But, yeah, it was, it was so, June, anyway. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you were... Uh, you were in the fall for 11 years. I yeah. have to say, though, that in the Philippines, um, it, the fall weren't really that big, unlike the Smiths. Um, no. But there was, there was one particular song that many Filipinos love, which is C-R-E-E-P. Um, Great. But you, yeah. didn't, you didn't play drums on that no. one, did you? That was just it before was, me. I joined in 1986 for the Ben yeah. Sinister album, which is my yeah. favourite one I played on, Ben Sinister. Yeah, it's got yeah. Mr. Pharmacist for a start, which we did at Abbey Road yeah, um, yeah. in that big studio. It was amazing. It has got a vibe, that room, that studio. It was great yeah. while we were there. Um, Duran Duran sauntered in to have a look at the studio with a view oh, to oh, renting yeah. it themselves. Yeah, and uh, you can see them in the control room at the top from where we were. Uh, I don't <laughs> think Mark was that happy about it. You know, the kid, it was, it was uh, John Simon Le Bon, and the, I think yeah. it was the guitarist uh, came Nick in. Rose. You know, with Mike, Mike, we had a, a bodyguards yeah. and all that with him. I was just oh, having a look, you know, going, "Oh, it looks all right." This, uh, yeah, we'll rent it, you know. Yeah. But that was why we were down. We, we were actually recording down or running through a rehearsal for the, a tape, yeah. you know, a live pass for Mr. Pharmacist. All right. Well, I really need to sort of like get into like do a lot of research about the fall because it's one of those bands that I love Manchester, but I never really got into it. Um, my well, colleague in B, Neil, they're not he from said Manchester. That he Mark was from oh, Salford. Mark was from Salford. Well, Greater Manchester. <laughs> yeah, but I don't it, know. <laughs> well, back in the um, the good old days of um, you know, um, uh, you know, Manchester. Yeah. When journalists would say, "Oh, it's great, isn't it? You're from Manchester too." Yeah. He'd really berate that journalist. So you've not done your own work. You're from Salford. <laughs> I'm from Salford. They didn't like being caught up in all that uh, Manchester explosion that happened yeah. in the late eighties, early nineties. You know, the Mondays and the Roses and the Charlatans and all that. 
that's why I moved to Edinburgh uh, to get away in about 1990. He loved <laughs> Edinburgh as well, and he loved, um, you know, whiskey, Scottish whiskey and Irish yeah. whiskey. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but he <laughs> laughed. Uh, yeah, I took him up there to his new flat, which was lovely. Oh. You know. Yeah. And the jungle um, in Sarah in Edinburgh. Right. Um, yeah. Again, um, my my King B colleague Neil, he said that he got into the fall in 1986, and Mr. Pharmacist was the song that got him into oh, the fall. Like, yeah. Right, right. And then yeah. Later on, later he said that he found out it was a cover version. Yeah, the other half, I think, American band did it. I think it was. Oh. I think that's what they were called. I might be wrong. The other half. Oh, right. No, you have no, to confirm um, that with me, Anna. Yeah, I've got <laughs> to start, like, say, I mean, you know, I have to admit, I really have to get into it because the yeah. fall for me, the only one I know is like, you were in Victoria. Well, you drummed Victoria, on Victoria. Yeah. Miss, I played on, um, I played on uh, in, um, Victoria, Ghost in My House, yeah. Pharmacist, yeah, yeah. snare drum rolls on the Hit the North. Um, yeah. Bill is dead, but my favorite album was the one before uh, I joined This Nation Saving Grace. Uh, remains yeah. my favorite fall album. And if somebody yeah. said to me, I've never heard of the fall, what they like, I'd say, Well, buy this album, This Nation Saving that's, Grace. That's that's what oh, I'd say okay. to them, you know, as an introduction. Okay. And it's, yeah, I think it's the yeah. best one, but I do like Ben Sinister. I liked Extra yeah. Kate that we did in about 1990. Um, yeah. We were on Beggar's Banquet at first. And we, uh, it was great. We are getting wages, good wages for back then, for, mm -hmm. for all this time, uh, this 11 years, 10 years. <laughs> and uh, we were on Phonogram Records when Extra Kate came out, we did a big tour all over uh, Australia, Japan, Brazil, America, North America. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> I'm really grateful for the experience that Mark gave me. Uh, yeah. I really am. You know, he was a mate at first. Um, later on in the band, he, he kind of got, we got sort of separated. And uh, I went on holiday with my dad to Tunisia. Nobody had a mobile phone uh, in that year. Well, I didn't yeah. anyway. And uh, it was uh, 1996 or five. Anyway. I got back, what's going on? You know, what's the band doing? Oh, well, the Steve's, the bass player's at uh, Wi-Fi. She said, don't yeah. you know, they're in a studio in uh, North Wales recording. I said, what? You're having a laugh, aren't you? So I got on my uh, Golf GTI from the airport and shot yeah. down to North Wales and found this place <laughs> called the Windings. Scrunched up down the drive um, on the gravel path and I could hear somebody playing drums, and sure enough, it was Carl Burns playing my kit. And I walked in, and he, he looked really frightened when I come in. I must have looked really angry. I wasn't <laughs> angry with Carl. I was angry with Mark for trying to punish what? me for going on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but I Carl got up from the kit and said, it was Mark who made me do it. He made me play, like well, because he weren't in there. It's all right, Carl, it's all right. But after that, it was never the same. Uh, that was the Middle Class Revolt album in 1990. Right. I think we did it in 95 or 96. Yeah. Well, Neil said that you didn't get on top of the pops. Did you not play on top uh, of the pops? Not with them. I didn't do. With Ian Brown, I did twice. But with the fall. When we yeah. joined Ian, my classmate, um, for the Golden yeah. Great album. Of which this is, I put this up for that you one, behind yeah, me. So it's a, a gold now. disc or whatever. Well, it's a gold CD, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, that was great. And uh, that was the year 1999. Uh, I played with Ian and 2000, Dolphins and Monkeys. And I co wrote Golden yeah. Game, the actual track, you know, the music. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I'm really proud of. And uh, it's a good song, Golden Gaze. I do like the drums on it. And that's the main oh. thing for me, you know. I wrote it on a keyboard um, that yeah. Mark had got me, a Yamaha SY55, 
which was in the Lou newspaper, and me and him went to Chester from here to go and buy it. And that's how I wrote free range uh, for, the, for the fall on a keyboard using a bass synthesizer sound and get, making a riff, you know. And that's how that came about, and that's how Golden Gaze came about. Oh, and so right. Ian, Ian Brownie said, you better... You better uh, hope it gets the number one side of this. Well, it didn't, <laughs> but it did all right. And uh, I'm still that proud of it, that one. Well, in your book, there's um, there's a bit there when Ian Brown met Mark E. Smith. Can you tell yeah. us that? When when you went to the pub um, and then, yeah? Well, I just I joined in 86 with the fall. And as I say, me and Mark were good pals, really. And we go to the Hacienda together, just me and him. Um, he liked to dance about, you know. He used yeah, to go to yeah. Wigan Casino, he told me. Um, I was just a little bit too young uh, for that. But anyway, uh, we went to 42nd Street uh, um, in Manchester, which is a yeah. club that's been going years. And uh, I went with Mark, and Ian was already there. And Ian was starting the roses up, and they're getting more and more press. You know, every week there's something about the roses, da 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 da. Yeah, it might have been yeah. 87 or 88, actually. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, Ian, um, Mark, Ian bought us all a drink. We all had a pint of beer or whatever. And it came, I bought, then I bought one for the three of us. And then it came to Mark's turn and he deliberately didn't buy one for Ian, which is a bit <laughs> naughty, really. So Ian was so pissed off with him, he burnt a copy of it. It's a new thing by the fall <laughs> on his bonfire in the back garden where he lived in Didsborough. Um, <laughs> and uh, it didn't, it didn't you, get on you, at all. No. <laughs> have you spoken to him about that uh, recently? Ian? About, yeah, have yeah. you spoken to Ian about us? Has he forgotten uh, not, about not, that now? Or? Not for a while, but um, Ian helped me went up to, uh, you know, he's got a great memory, Ian, and he helped me remember <laughs> a lot of things that I've put in the book, you can drum but you can't hide. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Which, so he knows yeah. all about it, you know. This one here. <laughs> there it is. This one. That yeah, cover, one. this is not the original <laughs> cover, though, is it? No, I mean, this um, is the one, the second. That's a Stanley Chow show. cover, uh, the pop yeah. illustrator. What a talented guy. He even made, makes me look all right, though. But when he did it, I said, the ears are a bit big, aren't they? <laughs> 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 he started laughing. You know, you know, this is, this, I'm going to tell you something. This is true, because um, I'm not a big um, book reader. I prefer sort of like listening to music and stuff. But yeah. this book, when, when I bought it, I mean, really, it's the only one that I just finished in... You can do it in two days, can't you? Two it, or three days. Yeah, because it was just so good. Like like I told you earlier, that I just wish I was already living here at the time, you know? Because it's well, not it's, just about it's not just about your story, it's about Manchester as well. Yeah, it is. You know, it, yeah. It, yeah. It's not Manchester Shakespeare. Music. It's not Shakespeare, mm -hmm. but you know, it's I'm, I'm dead honest in it. I'm not holding it's, anything back, you know. And yeah, I'll stick I'll, by it. <laughs> Forever and more. <laughs> I'll, have this, I'll have this one over Shakespeare. <laughs> um, you've got your um your podcast. I've noticed that it's on Spotify, and it's it's something to do. It's like um something to do with your book as well. It's called Funky Size A to Z of Manchester. Yeah, that's right. I've done that's one series. Um, I really enjoyed doing it, going through the alphabet, things that have influenced yeah. me. Um, or, or, you know, uh, right through the 26 episodes with Tadar yeah. Media, uh, Jackie O'Malley was my co-host. Now, Jackie O'Malley, when I was in the fall, uh, Mark Smith wrote a play called Hey Luciani about oh. the uh, suspicious death, some say, of John Pope Paul I. It was, only in, uh, it was only there for about two weeks, and the white smoke started coming out. Say he'd gone. And David Yellow uh, wrote a bestseller called In God's Name, which Mark E. Smith read. And he thought he'd write a play about it, you know, what the oh, coming to go in. But anyway, Jackie um, had a part as a nun. Um, I played a corrupt cardinal 
in the Vatican. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember my stage name. I've got the programs. <laughs> I've seen the I've seen the record because my friend Gilbert, who's in the Philippines, he recently ordered that um, the full sort of like record. So I don't know. I, I haven't listened to it, but he's got right. that one. Which um, yeah. So, um, but anyways, so um, that would have been also... the Pardon? Well, we were talking about my podcast, Funky Size Eight, is he of Manchester? Yeah. yeah? Yeah. I don't know what letter that was. Probably H for Hey Luciani. Uh, right. When we performed it down in London. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great yeah. time, yeah. And we oh. did a ballet, of course, with The Fall. I Am Curious Orange. And we performed at the Sadler's Wells in London, no less. And also in Amsterdam, where we met the Queen of Holland, who came and <laughs> shook our hand. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that, it's been a very interesting ride with the fall. It was, you know, really yeah. good. Yeah. Oh uh, God. <laughs> well, you're on. You before the fall. You were also on um, the weeds. This is like um, with Carrie. Carrie Lawson. Yeah. Of, so like Carrie Lawson. Lawson is. Yeah. It started yeah. out with uh, Andrew Berry, who, who who rang in before for that question. Oh, right. Yeah. About yeah. what band would you want to be in? Isley was this. Um, <laughs> he he started the band off. He was hairdresser to the stars. He did New Order, Morrissey, um, all these. Oh my God, that's him. People, yeah. Oh right, okay. That's so Andrew that, Berry who sent oh, that right. back, you know? okay. Yeah, hi Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, he, he, Andrew was a big influence on my uh, you know trajectory on this drumming journey. He really was. Oh, In fact, right. Andrew. Actually introduced Johnny Marr and Morrissey personally for the first time, brought them together. It was him, Andrew Barry. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh wow! But um, <laughs> yeah, Andrew we had a band called The Weeds. Um, yeah, I was yeah. on drums, obviously. He sang and played guitar. We had Mike Rojo, who was a bass player. Who used to work with Andrew in the Hacienda Hair Salon called Swing under the stage there? So when bands were coming oh. in, whether it's Grandmaster Flash or, you know, the Smiths or whoever, yeah. he'd cut their hair if they wanted their hair cutting. We used to hang out there a lot at Swing. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Uh, Carrie came later. Um, she played on a single that we did called. China Doll. China Doll, yeah, yeah. China Doll, which is on Mark Riley's uh, record label called In Tape. We had, you know, we released a vinyl seven inch. Um, yeah, I've yeah. got one. Have you got one of them? Not the seven inch, but it's on the um, Manchester North of England compilation. Yes, it the is. New right. Yeah, the new sign. Is that the one with all the swim, swimwear models on the front? No, it's just the no, song, like world. the one that I. It's just a photograph of you of the band and it's all like in a field. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'll try and take it out that weed single, you know. Yeah, yeah. It must be yeah. rare that one, so. <laughs> Probably, yeah. They wouldn't have done many. Yeah. Um. Hello. You can you can still hear me? Uh, right? Yeah, me. Oh, it's frozen again. Well, I think that's it, mate. You know, now, now. <laughs> Hello. You there? Yeah. 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 I can hear you. Um. I just want to say hello to Trevor Palmer. He's watching us, and he said that he was at Sadler's Wells to see. Oh right. Cur okay. Curious Orange. Yeah. Ask him what so, he thought of it. Ask him what he thought of it. Well, there you go, Trevor. What did you think of? <laughs> and um, Neil, Neil said that he remembers um, a great single by Andrew Berry from 1990 called "Kiss Me I'm Cold." Oh yes, yeah. Um, we did that yeah. with Johnny Marr. James Ella played bass. Oh, Johnny um, Marr as well. Johnny yeah, Marr. Yeah, they did it round at the studio. That's his guitar. You know, the good guitar. Uh, wow, wow. <laughs> you know the lead guitar? Yeah. yeah. That, we did that at Johnny's uh, studio in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just saw, that, like, yeah. from, from your book, I also found out that 
Johnny Ma's surname is not really Ma. He wasn't no, it was originally Johnny Ma. No, well, it's, uh, it's Johnny Ma, um, like the Buzzcocks drummer, M A H E R. Well, yeah, John, yeah. Johnny, didn't want to get his, him and um, the drummer from the Buzzcocks confused. So he changed it by Deeple. Some M A double R. M A double R. Right. Yeah, no. oh, cool. yeah. Well, um, Travis said that he thought you know the uh, Sadler's Wells gig, yeah. Secret Orange. He said that it was excellent. Oh, um, good. Not, yeah, not sure about the old ladies in the audience who thought they were going to no, the ballet. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so not for everybody, you know, sticking your bum out of your ballet. <laughs> You know, it's quite a hardcore, isn't it? Sadler's Wells, you know, ballet, sort of very you know, world renowned. Probably not used to that kind of thing. Probably never seen anything like it in their lives, probably. But it was great fun. We did it Monday to Friday for about three or Saturday for three weeks. And we get a bus and we're staying in Earl's Court. That's where Jackie O'Malley was, the nun. It was also oh, my co host on the A to Z Funky Guys. Manchester. Do you know if there are clips on YouTube of that? Sadly, well, no, no. Sadly. it's a bit no. of a mess. Certainly not of the play, Hey Luciani. There might be little bits. There is little bits of the ballet, I Am Curious Orange, yeah. But I don't think they did yeah. the full thing. Well, might have done, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I'd like to see the, the, uh, the play more early. You know, Hey Luciani. Yeah, but nobody yeah. mysteriously has got any footage. Yeah, it's a bit it's of a shame, mystery. Though. Wish we already had mobile phones, but <laughs> yeah, but people had cine cameras, don't they? In nineteen eighty six. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Why, why is there no footage? No footage of it. Well maybe Trevor it. maybe Trevor's got some footage. If you I have can, footage, Trevor just let him. <laughs> Wait, I also wanted to ask about um the colour field. Oh yeah. You auditioned for the color field. Oh, you know, no, sorry, you played. You played with them, didn't you? I did that, on the, this TV show called The yeah, Tune. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, it, but it then after great. that? After that, they dropped me. And then I joined the fall via the weeds. Yeah, that yeah. Was it. Yeah, that but was what it. Was, what was your, um? so like, what do you think of Terry Hall? Oh, well. I thought it was amazing, uh, uh, iconic lyricist. Yeah. Just the way he'd just be like, you know, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's very quiet. You don't get much out of him. Um, you know, Man United fan. I don't know that he lives around here still, but he did move up here from Coventry and lived in the sticks yeah. near where we played last night in at Moving, actually, the festival. Um I loved I loved the the, the album Waiting, which I, mm, I learned yeah. you know back to front the drums on it before I went for the audition with them uh, down in Stratford upon Avon in a studio there. Uh, drove yeah. down and we rehearsed at a place called the General Wolf in Coventry before we went up to um, Time Seas TV in Newcastle to do the performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did three tracks up there. One of them was a, a Kim Fowley song uh, called The Trip, which is quite interesting lyrics. Um, we right. did one called Sorry, a song called Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. B side or something. And the track, um, The Colour Field, it was actually called, like mm -hmm. the band. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, I the Colour Field the Colourfield were really big in the Philippines. We loved The Colour Field. And yeah, I, I know. We do, we do love Terry Hall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really good. I actually heard him talking yeah. on an interview the other day because he put a festival on recently, Terry. Yeah, that's right, yeah, in Coventry. And he actually yeah. did an interview that lasted more than a couple of words and it was, you know, he, he looked like he was enjoying life more so yeah. than back then when I, when I knew him in 84. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I love the specials. It, they were the best out of the two tone bands for me by a long mm -hmm. shot. Yeah. You know, concrete jungle, you know, brilliant. 
<laughs> no, I, I re- well, I, I I met Terry Hall in Liverpool. After oh yeah. The lightning, yeah, after the Lightning Seeds um, gig. I mean, he's he's very quiet. You know, he's just. If, I think he's just shy. But when yeah, yeah, you know, uh, with me, when I meet when I meet uh, like our music heroes and stuff, I was yeah. like, I said to him, "Oh my god." I was like this, and I don't know if he was really enjoyed it. Or I was like, "Oh," he said to me, no. oh, "I like that." I was like, "Oh," and then he just saw sort of like smiled. And I thought, "Oh, can I have a photograph no. with you?" It was like that with me. Which I took him out uh, the colour field to the hacienda one night. He tried yeah. to uh, chat up my girlfriend when I gone to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Terry did. Well, yeah, I love him, and uh, you know, again, a big influence on my musical, you know, taste over yeah. the year. You know, gangsters, brilliant. We used to listen to that round at John Squire's house, you know, in the back bedroom. Yeah, uh, where yeah. his mum and dad's, you know, gangsters on the uh, little, you know, uh, record player. Yeah. yeah. Uh- and then um, via Terry Hall, um, you also met Craig Gannon. And then, of course, Craig yeah. Gannon became a member of the Smiths. That's right. It was me who yeah. passed his number on to Johnny, actually. When Johnny said, um, that Craig Gannon guy, um, we need another guitarist to beef up the sound. You know, now now we're playing in America. Yeah. And they got him in. Yeah, they got him in. He's a great guitar player. Really yeah. good. I've worked with him since that. Um, so that was in 1984. A few years ago, I worked on a session with him uh, down over in uh, Salford. You know, media oh, City. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I did a thing just... called... Well, we did it. We, we had a, a song called um, By Freak Party. Oh, which, yeah, yeah. It was a rehearsal tape uh, that we used to reconstruct it. Uh, a yeah. song, but it was it was Craig Gannon playing guitar on it, me on what? drums, Andy Rock on bass, Firefly. Was it released? Um, was it released? It was released as a twelve, a seven inch single. Oh my god! I, I'll get I'll get you one. I'll get you one. <laughs> it, was, yeah, uh, also, it was Angie Brown, the disco sensation singer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, do you know her? Yeah. Angela oh Brown, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bizarre yeah. end. She did the vocal, not Morrissey. <laughs> we didn't have a vocalist then, so she did it four years later. Angie Brown. Yeah. From yeah. bizarre end. Well, Craig Cannon has played with all well, like like the Bluebells and as the camera. So he's yeah. you know he's really good as well. He's a very oh, good yeah. guitarist and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so. lovely lads. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Love are you still in touch? Are you still in touch with him? I've got his number. Occasionally, you know, we cross paths. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, also, yeah. and do you Pardon? also, uh, according to the to your book, you also auditioned for um, ABC in yeah, Free Fab, Free Fab's ABC. Crowd, you know? we just um, at the time, and Johnny Marr says this in his book, "Set the Boy Free." Mm-hmm. That all the drummers that he knew, including myself, wanted to be David Palmer from ABC, who was their drummer who played on all the records. <laughs> Dave Palmer, yeah. But yeah, exceptional <laughs> guy from Sheffield, Dave Palmer. And, yeah. You know, I think he's a session guy in LA or whatever now. But um, yeah, I just love the drums on it. You know, it's funky, yeah. it's crisp, yeah, yeah. it's not over complicated. Oh, yeah. Showing off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, what about what about Prefab? Prefab Who? Sprout as well? Yeah, Prefab I don't know. Sprout, I, don't yeah. I, don't know. Uh, yeah. I didn't get the ABC one. I got the Terry Hall one eventually, but I, I did go Terry, with yeah. Prefab Sprout in London. <laughs> uh, I think I don't know. If that might have been Johnny uh, kindly got me, garnered me that audition. I think. Anyway, I didn't get it, and so uh, uh, to, to, Tony Conti got the gig and, and um that paddy lad the singer lovely lad and his brother on yeah. bass they were all dead nice but before it even started drumming at the audition they went listen 
I've got to tell you, we've had Tony Conte before you. We, we think we might be having him. So, you know, and it's like, right, okay. Like, so Tony, <laughs> Tony, he got the gig. Uh, and then he went, he went with Dave Bowie after that. So for a bit. Tony oh, Conte. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but he played on, you know, all the um, cars and girls and, uh, you know, hot dog or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Do you have where, any... Do you have any drumming heroes or your favourite well, drummers? Yeah, I do. Um, all those Motown guys, you know, Clive Stubberfield. I loved him. I love um, Jonathan um, Sugarfoot Moffat, who was Michael Jackson's guy, who played on a lot of his records. You know, that was the yeah. ultimate gig uh, for me as a drummer. <laughs> Yeah, to get the Jacko gig, how amazing would that have been at the time? You know, they're doing that because you know, there's no yeah. doubt his music's brilliant, whatever, uh, despite everything. It's a shame yeah. we don't hear it on the radio anymore. Oh. And, and some radio station played, uh, gonna what's it, st gonna get something started, is it? Oh, yeah, 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 that one on the radio. Yeah, it's the first yeah. time I've heard a Jacko song on the radio since all that scandal broke. And I just thought, blow me that, this sounds amazing. And I miss yeah. listening to his stuff on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Jonathan uh, Moffat. <laughs> Tony about, Thompson um, out of Sheik. What about, about Renny? Tony Thompson played on all the Sheik oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What about uh, Renny? He's another one. And also to an extent, Topper Eden from the Clash. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you're a big he, fan he, of the he Clash. He could do everything: funk, rock, jazz, yeah. reggae. Reggae, you know, yeah, yeah. So he influenced me, but mostly those um, those uh, American black guys who were at Motown and knocking them out every day. You know, his massive drum tracks. You know, nothing yeah. too complicated. Just sitting on it, nice. Yeah. Well, so yeah, um, those guys. When, when you were with The Fall, um, there's a, in your book, Johnny Mars advice to you. I find this really, really nice. It's like he said, don't mix your drugs. No. <laughs> and, eat, and eat plenty every day. <laughs> yeah, he did. Good advice of Johnny there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> we were all mess, messing about with all those kind of things early on. But um, no, I mean, you know, he'd been on big tours. Before yeah. I did, uh, with with the fall, so he knew how it was on the road. Mm -hmm. So he's going away uh, next year, isn't he? Sporting the Killers all around John America. Going, yeah, John yeah, Mara, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is great. You know, um, I bet he's happy about that. You know what I mean? I don't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's he's amazing. Do you know when I met him at the album launch, the the last one that he did. I thanked him for um, for being here, for oh. being here in Manchester, and he actually thanked me for choosing his city. And oh, I was like, that's nice. He's yeah, he was just so nice, and I said, "No, thank you for <laughs> forming this mess." Yeah. Because <laughs> like, if it wasn't for this mess, you know, it's like is that the, is that your favorite band, Anna? Well, when I was a, a teenager in the Philippines. That's how I got into Manchester. It's like because of the Smiths and oh, okay. and Ma. So when I finally wow. got a chance to talk to him and stuff, oh. I told him that, and he was like, he, he looked really like humbled, and he said, "Thank you for choosing my city." And I was like, "Oh, oh. my god!" No, thank you, <laughs> you know? Good yeah, he's, he's so nice. <laughs> well, that and also when I was like. Um, an adult when I was in the UAE, it's the Stone Roses. That's right, what well. I, think, right. I think you're amazing because the Stone Roses really, I wouldn't say, well, okay, it's a bit of maybe exaggeration to say saved my life, but actually, right. when I was in the Middle East, when I was in the Middle East, I just wanted to go back home. And if it wasn't for the Stone Roses, if it weren't for the Stone Roses, I wouldn't have stayed, right? But okay. I just, yeah, I discovered well, that's good. this one. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's a sort and... of a far reaching influence they've had on the world, <laughs> you know. Yeah, music's great, you know. Yeah, yeah. And 
actually it's like um there's another one uh with uh, another quote uh, from Ian Brown that he said that I always knew Sai would get the first or the, the furthest. Right, he, he did that say that, yeah. You, you, yeah, the, you, you, you're the Well, he, he was the wrong one second. Well, <laughs> but I've got no, no regrets, you know. <laughs> no, no, because you're, you're, you're a legend. Like, um, no, I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't wish for anything uh, different. I really wouldn't. I'm dead happy. I'm really happy that I'm still playing in a band that I really love now. Yeah, uh, with which, San Pedro Collective. With San Pedro, yeah. Let's talk about San Pedro Collective because that's the mm. one with um, um, Ricky Turner, Paris Angels. That's right. Well, yeah. um, so, I've heard of the Paris Angels, and about three years ago, I got a message off him saying, "Sad, you want to play drums? I've heard you're looking for a band," which I was. Yeah. yeah. And I've not, I've not heard his voice yet, so I put something on YouTube by Paris Angels. Loved his voice, so, so I thought about it, rang him back. Yeah, I'll yeah. do it. Is it going to be funky, though? I said, and he went, yeah, it is. And yeah, he's kept yeah. his word all the way down the line, Ricky. He's a great artist. It's a pleasure to know him. Um, yeah. He's going to be doing different bits and bobs with other people soon. We're going to do one last e uh, EP next month um with ricky as yeah. a member of the san pedro it's him who started it san pedro going back to uh, into george bukowski a writer in america um who lived in san pedro which is also where the film starsky and Hutch, funnily enough going back to oh, yeah Star yes, yeah going back <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back I mean, to funky side nicknames, <laughs> so you're you're the perfect drummer for it because you're funky yeah, side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm doing what I want now, you know. Yeah, I, it's yeah. got that funk in it somehow, and that's what we've been doing. I've just released um, a, an EP called Phase Two EP on Blindside UK Records. Uh, yeah. It's got a song called Time. It's got one called You. It's got one called In Your Way. And they're on YouTube, if you look at the San Pedro uh, YouTube channel, or indeed my YouTube channel, Simon Wollstonecroft. Are you so, going to be uh, yeah. re releasing it as so like um, like a physical copies of it and not just... Uh... Yeah, it would be um, nice to have like either CD or vinyl. Of, um, vinyl no, you have to download it, this San Pedro. Download, yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I, don't, I don't really like to get involved in that side of the thing. I just like to turn up. Do my thing, yeah. and then someone else, you know, get, uh, takes it away and PRs it, puts the record out, gets vinyl. Yeah. Uh, maybe the next record that we're going to record uh, with uh, Ray Mitchell the Fourth, who's going to yeah. produce it for us, is from Chicago, and uh, we're going is into his Chicago? studio. He's from is Chicago. An no, an EP. Oh, an EP is oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're going oh, to. Maybe uh, Maybe if you have an album, then that could be good for a vinyl or some a vinyl copy of it. Well, okay. maybe we will this time. Maybe yeah, we will. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put it to the management. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from San Pedro Collective, you also have Lucy Chenick. Yeah, this is another a band that I'm working with. Um, yeah. Lucy, I, I met her at some gig somewhere opposite the Deaf Institute in Manchester. Before the lockdown, um, and you know, she was lovely. Um, she got in touch last year and said, Oh, remember me? I asked you then if you play drums for me. You said you would that night. Will you play drums for me? I says, Yeah, why not? So we went to record a song called Hope um, mm -hmm. by Lucy Jenick. It's L U C I G E N I C yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. That was the first single that I've worked on. Uh, another one came out called Still Breathing last month. We're going to record one called Comfort Zone, which um, the first time she played it with in the studio the other, the other day, it just knocked me sideways. I thought, wow, this is brilliant. It's like Karen Carpenter or something. So we're going to be recording that. That's what I hope. And that'll be the next yeah. single, but we'll see. It's not my band, you see. I just sort of uh, give me advice. Wait. But San Pedro is your band now. San Pedro yes. is your band. But, but Lucy Janik, you just sort of like 
provide the drumming. So it's yeah, not basically, really, I'm not. Yeah, I, yeah. I have um, done a, well rearranged comfort zone the song from what it yeah. was. So I've got a part in that song now. And I want to get it recorded and get it on the record, so to speak. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'll be happy. But I'm doing both things. Rick is doing things, you know, electronic and stuff. But he's going to do this EP with us. Uh, and then yeah. we'll see how we get on after that. But yeah. we're playing, actually, um, um, at Retro Bar this uh, September the 25th in Manchester yes, on Saturday. That's right, yeah, right? I'm going to go, definitely going to oh, go and really? see yeah. you. Yeah, please come yeah, along. Yeah. We yeah, were talking missed... about you last night, me and Ricky, actually. Yeah. About you, Anna. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Because I keep, I keep missing. It was like all these, it's all the clashes. Well, gig clashes. We wanted to stay out all night, yeah, Ricky, but... you know what I mean, partying. Yeah, But yeah. I had to get home because I said, said to him, I'm doing Ask the Drummer podcast. And I've got to, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it, so I'm damn, I'm God well. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to see you on the 25th uh, retro. Right. retro okay, bar. brilliant. But, you know, like with me, I like like meeting because in your book you said that never meet your... Well, it's not you who said it, but people say that never meet your heroes, but you actually met Mick Jones because you're a big fan of The Clash, right? Uh, yeah, but I you thought you were going to talk Brown. about Mick up more then. Yes, I have. No. Um, <laughs> um, he wasn't really my hero before, but he was a he is a fantastic singer. He was another yeah. friend of Marquis e. Smith's, and uh, we were in a bar in town in, in the early nineties, I think. Left me with Mick while Ma Mark went to do whatever he was doing, and I just tried to strike a conversation, and he turned on me like an idiot, like I was some kind of. Uh, I don't know, it was a quite unpleasant experience <laughs> meeting Mick Hucknell. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> but a lot, you know, got a great voice, and I? Oh, my mum loved him, you know. <laughs> oh, he's from Manchester. I mean, like, Manchester musicians are just amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got tinnitus, and I've got oh, tinnitus. Yeah, yeah, because um, it's all right. Well, I mean, you know, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that a lot of drummers get, isn't it? A yeah, lot, they do. A lot, a lot of drummers get that. Not just drummers. Um, you know, Ricky's got tinnitus as well. Uh, oh. You know, loads of people I know have Mike Joyce, he's another one. Yeah, drummers, musicians. Yeah. Drummers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, drummers and musicians, yeah, yeah. Well, right. Um, I just want to, there's this last paragraph in your book. I just want to read it because right. I think I could really relate to this one. Well, not as a musician, but when you said that this is the last paragraph. Um, right. This the missed opportunities i feel i've lived the dream which is like me I, I i am living the dream here in manchester and i have a beautiful daughter great friends and a gorgeous girlfriend hello lou uh, and um, hello. Hello. yeah hello lou wow. <laughs> and on top yeah <laughs> and on top of it all i'm still excited by making music yes i am that, that's still true it still stands more than ever Honestly, I love doing yeah. what I'm doing. I love playing that gig yesterday. Just really yeah. good. And I'll just keep doing it as long as I can. But, you know, um, I, I love it more now than ever because I'm playing what I want. I really, I highly recommend this book. I mean, it's like, if you're a fan of Manchester, if you're a fan of um, Manchester music, get this one. It's called You Can Drum But You Can't Hide by... Funky side. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not gonna say. I'm not even going to say, like, say your last name now because I, might get, <laughs> I might get it. I might get it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm glad we had a bit of a technical problems earlier. Oh right? well, at least we so finished glad. the conversation, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you want to just say, you know, like? 
last words to our friends watching us who joined us? Uh, well, just um, just get out there now. We're, we're allowed out, you know. Um, <laughs> enjoy yourselves for the rest of the summer. <laughs> be safe. Be safe. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. yeah. And enjoy your the virus, music. The virus still out there, so yeah, we we do need to be uh, you know, make sure that we're safe and stuff. yeah. Yeah. That's it. Enjoy the what's left oh. of the summer, I would. Keep funky. <laughs> funky, yes, funky side. Legend. Man, hey. I always say, well, I know it's Altrincham, but it's Manchester, isn't it, Altrincham? <laughs> like, right, I always Cheshire. say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Viva Manchester. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's only seven miles down the road. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so well, much. Thank thanks, yeah. thanks so much for having me on, Anna. I oh, thought you were great. Me. You're really good at doing this. Uh, oh, good luck. Good luck with the rest of your series. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> look thank look you out so for much. my new one. <laughs> <laughs> it really means a lot to me when you said uh, that. Yes, you do it. I was like, oh my god, yes. You know, I've got funky oh, stuff. <laughs> you know, I've been looking for. I've not seen you ever for two years. Yeah. Well, I will so see you on the, now. That's great. I will that. see you on the twenty fifth of twenty fifth. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Great All right. To thank see you so much. Thank Good you. you Bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye, Bye. Lou. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! It was so good. Cool. <laughs> oh, funky size, just amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, and um. Do apologize for what happened earlier, but you know, it's live, so things like that do happen. So ah, oh, thank you, Trevor. Thank you so much. I'm glad you saw sort of like um here and you know commenting on on while it's going live and stuff. But anyways, um yeah, thank you and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And once again, you know, love music, love life and love 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 drummers so i do love funky sai it's amazing uh, bye for now bye oh one love sorry <laughs>